All right, so I have 10 o'clock and I have just started recording. Uh, so we will go ahead and get started with our webinar for today. My name is Pam Batchelor and I'm with the Department of Public Instruction on the Digital Teaching and Learning team. And with me today is my colleague, uh, John Mars, and I'll let him introduce himself in a minute. Um, but we're just gonna take this first couple of minutes to make sure everything is working, our technology is good, um, so if you will, um, in the chat, if you will go ahead and type in a hello, and uh, we'll just see if everyone is able to join and if you're able to see my screen. Uh, so if you are new to WebEx, uh, this screen right here should help you. If you don't see the chat icon, you do have to click on the little uh, bubble icon in WebEx in order to see chat. So I'm going to give everyone just a second to get their audio connected. Um, you do need to make sure you select an audio method in WebEx in order uh, for you to hear us today. Um, and please make sure you do use that chat. We're going to be using that throughout the uh, webinar. So there's also a Q&A button if you'd like to ask questions. The questions go to me and John, uh, but we have a small group today. So I think we're just gonna mainly focus on using chat. Uh, so I do see a couple of folks. So go ahead and put a hi and an introduction um, into the chat message of uh, All right. So I see Elena, and I'm, if I see her. All right. Who else is excited about talking about Go Open and See this morning? I am excited. Tambra, thank you. I'd be a part of that. And please let me know. I hope I, I said your name correctly. Please correct me if I didn't. Good morning, Becky. All right. So hopefully in WebEx, you're getting your sound connected, and then you've also clicked on that chat bubble um, in order to see the chat. We will be using chat throughout the webinar today. This webinar is also being recorded um, and will be available on our Go Open and See YouTube uh, playlist. All right, so just a little information about me. Um, if you are new to Twitter or use Twitter, please uh, follow me. And um, I like to share a lot of things, not just about Go Open, but also um, I'm passionate about Google Apps for Education as a certified trainer. Um, I also um, help with SchoolNet and Canvas across the state. Uh, so you'll, you might see a variety of uh, tweets from me. Um, you can also reach out to me via email. All right, just so a few CEU questions as we're going through. Um, this is our first webinar of the 2021 school year. Wow, I can't believe it's already, you know, back to school time. And um, so these webinars are one hour long and they are worth 0.1 CEU credit. Um, we do recommend that the digital learning competency credit. However, the credit approval is up to your local um, public school unit. Um, you will get credit for your live participation today with an email from me within five business days after the webinar with your certificate. Uh, so please give me those five business days because I do have webinars today at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7 p.m. So um, it'll take me a little bit of time to verify all that attendance information and get those certificates ready for you. Um, unfortunately, with our WebEx platform, uh, we cannot give credit for re watching recorded webinars because um, it does not record who has watched. Um, so you 
can only get credit from being here live and in person. So thank you again so much for taking some time out of your day uh, to join us. And today I'm really excited. We're going to talk about high quality um, resources and how we can look at instructional resources through that quality lens and how our platform of Go Open NC can really facilitate um, that dialogue of um, high quality instruction, which I think is something that is so meaningful, especially now when we're in a situation where a lot of us are doing uh, blended learning or, you know, a combination of students being in the classroom, being at home or all virtual learning. We have a reduced amount of um, impactful instructional time. Um, as I as I say this, my son is uh, completing fourth grade remotely in the in the room across from me. Uh, so I understand that we only have our students' attentions right now um, for a short amount of time. And so we really need to make sure that every minute of that is maximized with high quality instructional resources. Um, and so I'm excited to share with you Go Open NC. So just before we begin, I do want to know, has anybody, um, what your experience is with Go Open NC? So if you want to just go ahead and type in the chat um, a rating from one to five of how much you've used Go Open NC. Uh, so if you've never used it before and you're joining us today to learn more for the first time, if you want to give yourself a one and a five would be that you feel comfortable enough that you could um, share, go open and see with a friend and show them how to use the features of the, of the website to find instructional resources as well as author. So, all right, so we're giving, giving a 30 seconds here, so go ahead in that chat. All right, so I see a range. I see mostly ones in the chat. So that's very helpful to me. All right, so Go Open NC is our um, mission and our platform um, for standards aligned resources in North Carolina. So it is a, a place where teachers from all public schools, charter schools can come together and really collaborate on high quality resources that are standards aligned. All right, so we want we don't want to be Google, right? If you go and Google photosynthesis, right, you're going to get 4 million results. And who knows what 4 million results those are standards aligned to or not? Are they resources that are going to cost you money? Um, those types of questions. Uh, Go open and see it's, it's trying to be that collection of the best things and it's going to also allow um, you to collaborate right because we may not have those best things on the on the site yet, but we hope to um, with your help um, and commitment to being an active um, member of the Go Open NC community, right? So we wanted this place where we could have standards aligned resources, number one. We also wanted to make sure that there was a system for quality, coherence, and consistency of those resources, right? We, we want it to be the best things, not just the Google of everything, right? Um, we also wanted a place where teachers could collaborate and build partnerships. Um, I used to work as a district level um, instructional coach, and I used to have a lot of teachers that were singletons, right? They were the only ones who maybe taught their specific course. Like we had one American Sign Language teacher, right, within our whole district. Um, so we really wanted a place for Go Up and NC to be able to partner, right? So that one American Sign language teacher in that one district can reach out to all the American Sign Language teachers in North Carolina and really work together in a collaborative space. Um, so I'm so excited to have Go Open NC now. We also know we need to personalize our materials. Um, so some things that, you know, may be um, you know, good for one group of learners is not going to be the best fit for another group of learners. So with Go Open NC, you can remix um, materials so that way they're suited for the learner's needs, right? Um, and then, of course, we want this community of practice. So I do see that John has joined us on the call. So John, do you want to uh, take a second and give your introduction? All right, I just saw John and I thought 
I saw his icon, but maybe he's having uh, those WebEx technical difficulties. So we'll we'll give John a, a minute to, to get join us. Um, but yeah, so go open and see is all of these things, right? That's kind of our mission and goals for it, right? To have a place for all of this. So um, just in case, you're new to open educational resources, as most of you said you hadn't had a chance to experience Go Open NC before. Um, we wanted to let you know some of the things that you will see on Go Open NC. So, open educational resources are all the things, right? It could be anything from a full course that someone has designed with multiple instructional units, assessments, lesson plans, um, student activities. Um, or it could be just one of those things, like maybe someone created a cool um, interactive uh, lab um, resource, right? So they could put that on Go Open NC as, o, as OER, or it could be a whole course. It could be a textbook. Um, it could be a video. Um, we have a partnership with uh, some of our graduate students, and they have across the state, and they have submitted some video lessons um, talking about topics that they are getting their PhDs in. And talk about a really um, cool experience to have a video lesson from a young uh, PhD candidate um, in the state. So so we're excited about all these different partnerships that we've been building in Go Open and see over the last couple of years. So you'll have resources that are from pre-K all the way through 12th grade in all subject areas. Um, now we're still building our collection. Go Open and see went live in December of last year. So we're still a relatively new platform, right? And again, our goal is not to be the Google of things. It's to be really uh, selective and high quality resources. Um, so Instructional resources, the things that we want to make sure are in Go Open and see are things that are going to continue to be free to not only to access, but also to reuse and revise and remix and redistribute. Um, so there are six levels of Creative Commons licenses, um, and these Creative Commons licenses apply to the resources that are in Go Open and see. And so as a creator, right, of a lesson plan or that video, um, lecture, um, you get to apply the Creative Commons license that you want um, to your resource, right? So this is just a, a quick overview here of these symbols. Once you start seeing these symbols, you can't unsee these symbols. Um, but I did want to point out, as the creators of the work, they can choose different symbols um, for their licensing uh, based on what they want users to be able to do, right? So um, those R words are really important, remix, redistribute, reuse, but sometimes um, as a creator, you might want to restrict folks from doing some of them. Um, so, you know, we, we have the non-commercial, which is the um, NC symbol, right? For that license that the creator does not want anyone else to make money off of that resource, which is understandable. Um, so just to let you know what these resources mean, there's a link here on this slide uh, for Creative Commons, and I'm going to go ahead and put that bit.ly back in the chat. If you haven't pulled up our slide deck for today, you're going to want to, because in just a few minutes, you're going to be asked to click on some links. Um, so I'm going to put that back in the chat. All right, so our bit.ly for our slide deck today. Um, all of these resources are Creative Commons licensed, and you can, um, the slide decks that we go over in our webinars, you're free to take back and reuse and share. Uh, please do that and help us get the word out about Go Open and see. So before we dive into our main topic of looking at resource quality, um, I did want to kind of point out where you can find Go Open NC. So Go Open NC has a website. You can type in uh, the web address at the top there, and I'll also put it in the chat. Um, but we also have single sign-on through our NC Ed Cloud. Um, and this is nice because this makes it really easy for all of our educators across the state um, to access 
access, go open and see and already be signed in um, because you're going to want to sign in because signing in will give you um, access to save as well as evaluate resources. We're, we're going to talk a little bit about today, um, but just to let you know, go open and see the website is an open site. Anyone can go and look and search and see what we have on Go Open and See. And a lot of our resources are links. And so with a link, you don't have to be signed in. So just to let you know, um, you still can share this resource even with, you know, folks that may not have their NCID or UID yet. So maybe student teachers or other groups of folks um, that are interested in finding resources but don't have that NCID UID yet. All right, so here's a picture screenshot of what the Go Open NC um, icon looks like in your NC Ed Cloud tray. Um, so I do encourage if you do have NC ID and UID um, to go in and kind of train yourself to go in to Go Open NC from here because that way you'll already be signed in and that'll take one less step um, away from the you know the platform. It's kind of our single sign-on. So we're going to take a first few minutes and we're just going to look at resources on the platform. Uh, so if you haven't got Go Open NC pulled up, if you want to, I put the link in our chat or you can go in through the NC Ed Cloud and click on that Go Open NC icon um, and go ahead and tell me in the chat when you are um, at the platform. So I'm going to pull it up. All right, and here's the home page. All right, so go ahead and put in the chat when you are at the platform and seeing a home page similar to mine. All right, we'll give folks about 10 more seconds. All right, wonderful. And this um, webinar is being recorded, so you can always come back and watch that um, recording. If um, there's any of these steps that you're like, oh, where did Pam go? Um, you can always come back to the recording. All right, so from our home page, we have our blue uh, ribbon navigation at the top, right? Um, one thing to make sure is that if um, you don't see a little profile icon right there, if you click on it, it would say sign in. Uh, so that's just how you know if you are signed in or not. Uh, well, the first thing we're going to do is just look for a resource. Um, so there's a few different ways. You can use the, of course, the search is right here at the top of the page. Um, you can also search at any point in the page by clicking on the magnifying glass. And that opens up the search bar. Um, so, and that stays wherever you go in the uh, website, that search um, glass, magnifying glass is always there. Just to point out, um, we do have some tutorial videos if you scroll down on the website. Uh, so if you're brand new to go up and NC, um, and maybe particularly you want to look by searching by your standards, um, we do have a quick less than five minute there video about searching by standards. Um, so these are just some helpful resources that you can have. All right, so we're going to use this main search on the main page, right? And we can type in a keyword. So maybe I'm going to look for fractions, um, and then maybe I want to look for fourth grade. All right, um, so I can go ahead and click search. All right, so I've got fourth grade fractions, and I've got 349 results. Right now, I can go ahead and continue to filter these by standards if I want to. Uh, so if we go over here by education standards, and we go down um, through our drop down, and I'm going to go down to North Carolina math, and then we go down to our grade four and fractions. 
and maybe I'm looking for uh, decompositions. All right, so now I've got just 79 resources um, that are aligned to this particular standard. All right, so another thing that we can do to filter down is we can look at sorting our resources maybe by rating, right? So I'm going to look for the things that have the highest rating first. Um, so keep in mind, we're going to talk a lot about ratings today because it's part of our quality assurance ratings. Um, are that kind of Amazon star system, and they are subjective, right? When you look at a resource um, and look at it, you might see a four-star rating, I might see a five-star rating, and John might look and see a three-star rating. Um, so just keep that in mind, that overall star ratings can be um, kind of subjective, but you can certainly sort by that. You can also use some of these filters on the left side here to continue um, to kind of filter down these resources. Maybe if you were looking um, for a specific um, media format, you know, if you're looking for a video versus, you know, a, a interactive text or something like that, you can definitely keep searching. Um, let's look at this resource right here. Let's go fishing. All right, so I can see that this resource here, um, when every resource has like a landing page in Go Open NC, and this landing page gives you a description um, of what this is, uh, the subject level, the grade level. We can also see the, that Creative Commons uh, license there that's been applied by the creator. Uh, we can also see the standards that this has been aligned to. So this is aligned to measurement and data, as well as that fraction standard, right? All right, so we can go down here and there's a comments. Um, so we can, this is where we can leave comments. We can see some of these. Um, and this one in particular is talking about how this fourth grade, um, this comment, uh, how it can be um, re, mixed into being a seventh grade standard. So that's nice. Um, to view the resource, we actually click on the view resource and it opens up um, a summary. And then there's a link here for the actual lesson. Um, notice that you have the ability to remix this resource. This particular resource does require um, or allow for remixing. So if you look at it and notice there's something there that maybe um, you want to remix for your learners, you can actually remix, which will make a copy of this lesson plan, and then you can add uh, or take away um, the things that you need for your learners. Another thing you'll notice is there's a save button. So you can go in here and click, and you'll notice I have a lot of folders. If you don't have any folders yet, it's okay. Um, you can go down here on this little button that says create a new folder, and maybe I'm gonna call it uh, Fractions Fun 2.0. And when I do this, it's going to create the folder and it's also going to save this item to the folder. So I'm going to say create and save. And now I see that fractions fun uh, folder and it's already got this lesson in it. All right. So saving is kind of like your own way of bookmarking or, um, you know, keeping a resource for later on. Was everyone able to search for a resource? Are there any questions about searching before we go on? Okay, it looks like we are good so far. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is, okay, so I can save this resource to our folder. Um, you'll also notice that we have the Google Classroom integration. Uh, so if I wanted, uh, if this was a student facing resource, this is not, this is a lesson plan for me to look at as a teacher, but we do have um, some things on Go Open and see that maybe you would want to share directly to Google Classroom. You could click on this classroom button and it would ask you to 
to sign in with your Google account um, and then it would bring up your Google Classroom sections and you could, you know, from that point make an announcement or a post or an assignment um, in Google Classroom with the resource from Go Open NC. Um, so another thing that you can do is you can also download resources. Um, so if you wanted to download a PDF of this or even an EPUB file, we do have that ability within Go Open and See. Um, now, obviously, if a resource is a website, you're not going to be able to download, um, you know, an EPUB file of it. But um, for this particular resource, since it was authored in a platform, you can do that. So that's nice to have. All right, so we're going to go and we're going to spend a minute or so looking at this rating feature. OK, so we've gone through and we're looking at a resource. So I'm going to go back to the page here and you notice to give it a rating, a star rating, I simply take my cursor and I kind of hover over where I think that rating is. So if I thought it was a four star, then you'll notice now that it's saved a four star rating there. Um, so, you know, the star ratings are good because, you know, you can filter by them when you search. But the real ways to kind of determine quality um, is by going through and doing either a comment or an evaluation. Um, so we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at comments and evaluations. Um, but let's say, for example, that I clicked on this resource that I found and maybe a link was broken or maybe I click on it and it says it's aligned to seventh grade science, but maybe it's more sixth grade um, because of how we teach in North Carolina. I want to point out that there's a feature on Go Open and See on every resource called flagging. Um, and you'll notice it's this little flag icon on the page. And you just click on it and it says report this resource, All right? So go open and see um, is, you know, it's a collaborative site, right? It's part of our communications open practice that we really want folks to take ownership of reporting things that aren't working, right? So I can go in here and select an issue. So report a resource. And it's going to ask me what's going on um, with this resource. Is there a broken link? Because we all know with the Internet of Things, sometimes links change. Um, if we feel like maybe there's inappropriate content or inaccurate um, alignment, we can say that and then put in here, um, I think this resource is aligned to fifth grade standards, not fourth. Okay, so give us that comment and what it does is it creates um, a ticket that actually gets routed right to me and I can review that feedback, right? So it it's not something that, you know, any one person can do, but it's a collective activity of the whole, right? As the whole community, we all need to take part. Um, and when we see something that's broken or that looks wrong, please flag it. Um, you know, that's part of that being an active community member. So that way we can look at it and, you know, if it's a broken link, I can go um, try to resolve the link issue and get the new link for it. So that way that resource can continue to be used. All right, any questions about flagging a resource? All right, so what I'd like you to do is on the slides, We're going to talk a little bit about comments. So, so commenting on a resource allows you to give feedback about that resource, right? Um, we ask that instead of just saying, oh, this is a great resource, that you consider giving a little bit 
deeper of a comment that suggests why this is a great resource. This is a great resource because it has um, high level assessment questions, right, or good um, critical thinking questions, or maybe it's, um, you know, it integrates, you know, both ELA and art, right? Um, so consider those suggestions and also be known that the comments, when I submit a resource to go open and see, which will be one of our future webinars that I hope you join me for, um, you will also get an alert if someone leaves a comment on your resource. Um, so just know it's part of the community of practice that we leave good comments and that's how we're going to get better, right? Because I leave a, if I put one of my world history lesson plans up here, and someone leaves a comment that says, hey, this is a good resource, but it lacks, um, you know, uh, visual aids that would help the learner in engage in the text. Well, then I can say, oh, well, I never thought about that. Maybe I can go back and add, you know, some visual aids to the lesson. Or someone else could go and say, oh, that's a good lesson. It just needs visual aids. And so they can click on that remix button and add those visual aids that would help make that lesson better. Um, because we all know that as educators, we have a very different, you know, backgrounds and skills. And it's really going to take our community to be able to come together um, to improve those lessons in an iterative format, All right. So one thing that I, when I was a mentor um, teacher, I would always talk to my mentees about, you know, resources and lessons and how they can improve for next time, right? So go open and see would have been a great resource for me to have because I would have said, hey, put a lesson plan and go open and see, and then let's look and see how we can improve it once you have um, used that lesson plan. So that way next year, when it's time to teach the same concept again, um, you'll have this lesson plan ready to go and it'll be improved. Um, so just a notes about comments. So these are a couple of screenshots of comments um, that I thought were particularly helpful, right? Um, so you can see here um, clear assessment strategies, resources accurate and clear, um, easy to use, um, encourage the addition of actual objects or shapes, um, because this resource here was for um, pre-K and uh, kindergarten. So, you know, giving that hands-on um, interactive would be great for students. Right, so on slide 16, um, I have got 12 uh, different practice resources that I would love for you to take a look at, one of them. And give, it a, a give, give you a couple of minutes to look at the resource, give it a rating, and leave a comment about why you left that rating. Okay, so I would love for you to click on one of these resources. If none of these resources are things that you feel comfortable looking at, then you can feel free to do a search on your own. I picked these 12 resources because they currently don't have any ratings or comments. So I kind of wanted to get uh, a fresh perspective. So if you don't feel comfortable looking at any of these 12 resources, if you would do your own search uh, based on your subject area and grade level, and then if you would choose a resource that doesn't have any ratings uh, right now. So that way you could add to our community by giving that feedback. And I'm going to go ahead and put the direct link All right, so I'm going to give about three minutes to look at one of these resources, determine a star rating, and leave a comment. And if you will type in the chat when you are done.
All right, we'll give about 30 more seconds to wrap up your star rating and comment. Please let me know if in the chat if you need more time than that. All right, we had a request for a little more time, so we're going to do that request. Feel free to pick a second resource um, if you are done and would like to add feedback to another. Okay, hopefully everyone has had a chance to review um, a resource, leave a rating and a comment. Um, I know a couple of you are working on access um, to NC Ed Cloud, so maybe you've just taken a few minutes here to look at some of these resources um, that I have linked. So does anyone want to be brave and tell me the resource that they looked at and left a comment on and we can go look at it together? I guess I can chime in. Um, I did the fourth grade health one, um, oh. which seemed well aligned, but it's flash based. So compatibility is a concern. All right. 
Thank you, John. Glad you can join us, by the way. Those... Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, WebEx was a little unhappy with me this morning, but glad yes. I could be here. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And um, Willietta, did I say that correctly? Um, which resource did you uh, look at? Did anyone have any questions about rating or commenting? Uh, yeah, sure, Lilia. Let me see if I can unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I was talking. I, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It said, it said <laughs> you had to unmute me. I'm sorry. Okay, I use the Math One Statistics project. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like that project because all the students can have access regardless of whether they have um, a computer or not. They mm -hmm. can do it by hand and they can also do it using Desmos. Um, it is a nice way to assess their understanding of how to do basic statistics functions. Wonderful. And so we I can think, see your, your rating. I think my comments up there. Hold on, let me see. I made comments. Hold on. Can you see my rating? I can see the rating. I it, you may need to see if you can click comment. I don't see a comment. Okay, let me go back. Okay, I did type it, so let me see where it went. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, that's good. All right. Well, thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to share? So we're now going to take a little bit of a deeper look at how we can evaluate a resource. Okay, so we've kind of done, um, kind of, you know, looked at the resource. We've given it that, you know, Amazon rating, and we've left a comment on it. Um, but now let's really kind of dive a little deeper, right? So we have um, a North Carolina quality uh, rubric and checklist for looking at instructional resources. This was developed in partnership with the Friday Institute at uh, North Carolina State. And so we're going to look at the rubric and checklist and see what your thoughts are on how we can use these um, tools. And there's actually the rubric is loaded on to go open and see. Um, when you click on evaluate, you actually see the North Carolina quality um, review uh, rubric. And you can use that rubric to evaluate um, the resource on go open and see. All right, so on slide 18, there's a link uh, to the rubric and checklist. So I'm gonna put that into our chat. So if you want to take a second to open up that PDF. And so the first thing that we're going to look at um, is just a checklist, right? And so it looks for the areas of design, technology, instruction, and content. So the first thing is the checklist is a simple yes or no, right? So there's an, is the instruction focused, engaging, and informative? Is the content accurate, adequate, and appropriate? Is the technology purposeful, reliable, and accessible? And is the design motivating, clear, and user-friendly? So one thing to note about the checklist is that just because something has a no doesn't isn't like an immediate deal breaker, right? So if you go back to the resource that you looked at previously and look at this checklist, um, 
you know, look at it and think about how many yeses or nos. Um, and so this is something that I really wish I had again as beginning teacher, um, because I oftentimes wasn't looking quite through all of these lenses um, and particularly, you know, accessibility uh, and, you know, how reliable is it now that we're in this um, blended online world? Um, you know, having those features and thinking about that lens is particularly important. Any thoughts about the checklist? Has anybody used the checklist before? Just curious. All right. All right, now if you, if you scroll down starting on page three, you actually see the rubric. Um, and so this rubric is um, integrated into Go Open and See on every single um, resource where you click evaluate, you can actually use this rubric. Um, now I will say the rubric is pretty um, in depth, right? So um, a lot of times when we have done this in the past, we encourage teachers to just look through one or two lenses, right? So in thinking about I'm going to evaluate a resource based on instruction and content, or maybe I'm going to look at technology um, and design, right? So all of this information here on the rubric is av available when you click on evaluate. So we're going to model this in um, the actual platform. So I still have that math one statistics um, resource pulled up. So I'm just going to refresh the page, make sure I get the latest thing. And there I see um, your comments showing now. And so over here on evaluations, um, there's no evaluations yet for this resource. You could just click on the evaluate button. And again, this is one of those functions that you do have to be signed into the platform. So those of you who are um, not able to do so, you guys can look on with us. Um, and so this is kind of some review information. And then you can, there's even a video on how to um, use this rubric. Uh, so we're going to click on the start evaluating. The first thing it's going to be asking is me is for the standards alignment. Um, notice I do not have to fill out the entire rubric because I, I know that it's um, kind of lengthy. Maybe I'm just really going to focus on that accessibility piece, right? And so you can notice that as you kind of hover over each one of the descriptions, it gives you criteria, right? Um, so the resource provides accommodations. So we can click and also notice that you can add a comment, right? So this comment will show up in the comments area, right? So um, if we clicked on comment, um, resource is adaptable to multiple modes of access. All right, and then we click on save. So we can click on save and go to the next. And you'll notice down there's a little check mark next to accessibility. So you don't have to, you know, complete all of the rubric fields. You can just simply look at it. You know, I'm just going through for an accessibility lens. So maybe if you have, um, you know, an EC uh, coordinator at your school, maybe you want them just to go through and look for um, accessibility and, you know, usability, right? And then maybe you have a technology coach at your school who could go through um, for the technology elements. You know, how is it? Is it purposeful? Is it reliable? Um, so you could have a variety of different lenses all looking at um, this one um, element. All right, so I can click on view results. 
And you can see right here where it just says accessibility and then you notice there's a comment icon, right? So I'm going to finalize my review. And at any point in time, if I reload this resource, it now it shows my score and then um, it has my comment and it also tells me um, what area of the rubric um, that comment is related to, right? So now you can see evaluation right there. Any questions about the evaluation tool that's built in to go open and see? All right, if at any point in time it remembers my evaluation and I can go back and I can um, edit that rating as well. So, results. There we go. All right, so we're coming up on the last few minutes, and I did just want to make sure that you have um, some additional resources for our webinar here. So as well as you have the um, rubric and checklist, and here's some screenshots of it. Um, we also have um, some more opportunities to engage with the platform. We have some badges um, that you can, uh, so we have three challenges um, for collaborating, curating, and creating. Um, and, and you can earn a badge for Go Open and See if you would like to do so. We also have our upcoming monthly webinars. Um, so our next webinar in October, we will really focus in on groups and hubs um, in Go Open and See. And then in November, we're going to talk about how we can um, curate those resources. Um, so creating collections of folders and groups of folders um, and using uh, group features within Go Open NC to build a curated collection. And then in December, we're going to be talking about remixing and creating um, new lesson plans um, and resources within Go Open NC. If you have any questions at any point in time, feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can also reach out to GoOpenNC at dpi.nc.gov, um, and we will be happy to get back in touch with you. And again, this resources today um, will be, the recording will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. And then we also, um, you are free to reuse and remix um, this slide deck. Are there any final questions um, before we close out our webinar for today? And just to let you know, this picture right here is a link and it takes you to our webinars where you can register for all the upcoming sessions. All right, well, thank you very much for your time today, and I hope that you will come back and join us again in October as we take another look at Go Open and See with groups and hubs. Have a wonderful afternoon.